Hey, Dean. How's it going, man? Really good. And how are you? Oh, good, man. Good to see you. What are those numbers behind you? That's the vision? Uh, it's a couple of things. Actually, you recorded. I may as well share with everyone then. I was just I was just building down some note in terms of how I should structure the, I guess the content that we're going to give to everyone as well, just help. It's more so the delivery that's the most important as well. So I was just I was just very conscious on how I can deliver to, to deliver it to everyone as well. But um, yeah, I'll as well start with this because um, sort of a small vision back here as well. Um, I was I've got my financial goals up on the wall as well. I don't know if everyone can read it, but it's, it's around one hundred ten million dollars there as well. Um, that's passively per year. There's 100, 100 properties there as well, so 100 investment properties that I'd love to be able to bring in. Um, a bit more in particular, it's sort of uh, a big term vision, the cars that I want. I've got written down on there, the holidays that I'd love to be able to achieve as well. But my main, uh, my core values here as well. So I've got family, integrity, love, and optimum health there as well. Um, so they're my, they're my big core main values. It might, might change because I was just considering it as well in terms of cultures and blending it into businesses there as well. I know some cultures uh, of some businesses are really focused on the lifestyle as well. So I've been really, I've really been adding that. I'm probably going to add that to my, my core values as well, just adding in more lifestyle um, to my business values as well. Uh, but these are more my vision board as well, where I want to be able to achieve. My, my, my first car that I want to buy is my Range Rover Sport. Um, uh, my house that I want to be able to achieve as well got it all specifically really planned out for this next 12 months. There's obviously just another whiteboard where I just do things as well, but sort of my main whiteboard that I work with on a daily there as well. But that's sort of, I guess, my, my situation as well. But Dude, I love it. I, I, I freaking love it. I think, and I just talked about it in the call yesterday, like the more immersed you are, the more brainwashed, the more you brainwash your mind, like, for me, I think anything that I got in my life for is because I literally brainwashed my mind for what I want. Uh, so, dude, freaking awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so, yeah, this is your call, man. I just want to add as much value as I can to, to the members, and I'm going to share it only to the members. It's not going to be on YouTube, so feel free to dive in as much as you want, as much as you uh, can. Um, like, it's yours, man. If you want to start from literally from the beginning, how you find the deal, how do you found the deal, a little bit about the negotiation back and forth and then about financing, due diligence, perhaps just go through as yep. much as you can in the process. Awesome. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm probably going to start back before the deal because I think that's even most important. I guess my, my experience that I brought to it. But when I first started this particular journey, it was almost five years ago. So I'm 24 years old this year as well. But when I was 18, 19 years old, um, I used to come home. My family we never used to be um, very orientated for growth, personal growth and whatnot. And so I used to always come home from work and I used to always catch my brother watching Robert Kiyosaki on YouTube. And I used to just go straight upstairs. I used to not like watching this type of things. I used to just go, why are you watching this crap again? And I used to just go straight to my bedroom, and just you know, shower and just go to sleep and do whatever I used to do. Probably a good two to three months later of him consistently watching those videos, I finally decided to sit on the couch and actually watch these videos with him, actually understand it, and go, "All right, well, finally, what, what are you, um, what are you watching?" And then I'd actually start to understand it. And then eventually, we went to our first seminar as a family, my mum, my brother, and me as well. We went to our first seminar. It was all about property investing and passive income, and just that's what that's what really sparked the interest for me and my family. And I guess the main goal for us was retiring our mum. But that's where I met my first mentor. And this is where he probably set me on the first path of the journey, which was, Dean, I think that you should either go into business for yourself. And I think there are four main skills that you need to learn if you're going to step into business. And they were sales. You need to learn how to communicate effectively, he said. Um, he said, you need to know how to market. So you need to, get, you need to be good, good at advertising and marketing. You need to be a good leader. And leadership will always be a commonality goal, whether you're leading a company or whether you're going to war and you're leading a group of people to, um, to their death as well. It's the same thing with business. You need to be able to inspire people to do what they wouldn't normally do. And the last one is operations, systems and operations as well. And so over the last five years, it's been me really nailing down on each of those skills, which is I spent several years in sales. I learned marketing. I opened up my own marketing agency. It failed, but I learned how to market as well. The last one was leadership. So I learned how to run a company and 
you know, people still from that company keep in contact with me and that shows me that I've led them right and they still want to um, keep in contact with me and I, they still ask me for advice about different things as well. And then the last one is operations as well. And so this is where I'm bringing it all together. And I've really been networking with other people who specialize in networking, whose companies I've actually uh, been working with a consultant um, lately. She's going to be coming straight in after I acquire the business. I'm going to be looking at the operations of my business as well. We're going to sit down together and we're just going to be structuring out the organizational chart and really making sure it's clicking like time work as well, making sure everyone's holding held accountable there as well. And so that's, that's been the last probably five years of me building these networks, reading heaps of books, but I've actually stopped reading books, stopped watching a lot of content, stopped watch, doing all this, obviously that now it's time to just start putting in the work. I think there comes a time where you've just got to start actioning everything that you've, that you've learned and just put it into fruition there as well. That's a small background on obviously my journey and where I've come to. Um, I guess now it's stepping into the deals. I guess you could say the, the middle section of it all in a sense. So I know a lot of people have been asking me, even reaching out to me over, over Messenger as well. Um, the first particular deal that I, that I worked with, um, first deal is broker deal. I, um, I went through probably a good 10 to 12 brokers before I found one really good broker. <laughs> one good broker who understood, understood vendor financing. He's actually done a couple of deals on his own. And so for himself, he was like, yeah, I already understand what you're wanting to do. And I want to make sure you're a good fit for the business owner. So he was on my side already. I've built an amazing relationship with him. And I, I, I'm probably in the process of trying, after I close off this deal with him, I'm probably going to look at trying to hire him for my dream team there as well and trying to acquire him because he's already on the same wavelength. He understands the acquisition process. He already, he shot me out a due diligence list. And he goes, is this the information that you need? I go, yep, it's exactly the line with everything that I need. And so he was already a step ahead of me in terms of the processes and whatnot. He understood the financing situation. He understood it all. So I guess I, I've still played the numbers game, but I played the numbers game with the brokers. It goes hand in hand. Whether you're doing it with cold calls or whether you're doing it with brokers, it's still the numbers game as well uh, for myself. That was my particular scenario. And so... Um, I guess with this particular um, business deal, it wasn't a motivated seller. When he said to me, it, when we were having a lot of conversations over the phone, he said to me, this guy's particularly not motivated to sell. And I had a weird reaction in my head. It made me think, no, now I really want to buy this business because it's not motivated to sell. Something in me just, just, just made me go, oh, I really want to buy this business because it makes me see in my head, it goes, if he doesn't really want to sell this business, it means it's a good business. It means it, it must be quite sound and operational and whatnot. And started when I started looking into it a bit further, it was. It was on the edge of just being managed as well. He was just the last person in the way and all he had to do was just step back one more step and you could just put somebody else in there to run the business as well. So it's a perfect scenario. But um, from that moment on, um, when I engaged with the broker, I built an amazing relationship with him. Um, the next step was obviously to meet up with the business owner and because that already built a great, amazing relationship with the broker, the broker was like wanting me to connect with the business owner. And so we sat down together, we had a business meeting and in my head, this is, I guess, where my sales experience comes in as well. But I knew the one part, which is obviously making sure that I'm a safe uh, pair of hands for the business, but I want to go a level deeper. I wanted to personally connect with the business owner to make sure that I'm actually the right connection for him personally, not just for the business. And throughout the negotiation, throughout the conversations, he could find it throughout the, there were certain things that I ticked his, his number one box, which was, I, I understood his industry, refrigeration and construction. And as soon as he could see that, but based off what I was saying, he, he knew straight away. As soon as I left that business meeting, he spoke to the broker and said, um, I think he's the right person. How did you know sector, by the way? Pardon? How did you know about that sector? I'm sure other people are asking. Do you have experience in that oh, sector? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So prior to, so I left high school early. I left high school very, very early, I think about 15, 16 years old, and I jumped straight into construction. And so by the time I was 20 years old, I'd, um, I was already fully qualified um, in construction. So I already knew, I, I spent years and years and years in that trade as well. In fact, um, I'm actually going back to the company that I um, that I used to work for because me and a previous employee there had 
aspirations to open up our own business together as well. And we're still in connection today, five years later, and um, I'm wanting him to manage my business for me. And as that, was our, that was our initial, but I'm really starting to tie in, obviously, past experience into what I'm doing right now. I know that was one of the questions. Um, I think I'll pull it up actually really quick on my Facebook because I know one of the guys wanted, there were, there were key questions there as well. How, how am I financing it? Um, one of the key questions. So, so tell us perhaps in the meantime on kind of like the back and forth conversations that you had with the owner. So you got to that business with the broker. Um, yep. How did that went through? Like, how did it go through? Did you send an offer and you reject it? Did you like, tell us a little bit about the back and forth situation. Yeah. So, um, initially my first offer down was, so initially the business was for 780 K, um, plus stock and whatnot. But was, let's just leave the stock out of there for now. It's only $30,000, but, um, around 780 K I'd put in an offer at 600 K. I'd really, really gone really, really low just to see where they were playing at. And then the broker gave me a call after I actually placed that offer. And he was going, just help me understand your offer and why you placed it that way. Which is the reason why I knew he was a good broker because most brokers would just go, no, nope, that's a low ball offer. But he wanted to actually understand the reasons why and the structure and the finance and how you were going to do that. And it really went to a point where he, he just said blatantly, he said, look, to be honest, when I spoke to Mike, the business owner about it, he said he would probably be looking at obviously the original offer there as well. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I adjusted the offer again as well. It went a bit more higher up to $720,000. And um, obviously it was deferred. So a lot of it was deferred over what the, the term that I chose was around four to five years. So four years specifically there as well, over four years. And it was going to be like a, um, for me, after I did all the numbers and spoke to my finance guy as well, um, he said I could definitely raise uh, the amount that you need. It's quite easy based off the cash flow as well as the assets and whatnot. And he said it was quite easy to be able to, which I know we're probably going to have to drill into a bit more because I know a lot of people have got a lot of finance questions and whatnot. Exactly. So that's, that's a great lesson as well. The fact that you already talk to finance people while talking to the business owner, right? You always had in the back of the mind of your mind, okay, this is how much I can probably offer at closing, right? You didn't just randomly send an offer on whatever, right? So, yeah. And if you want to expand. It's, it's that consistency as well. It's always being, um, I, don't, I don't know what, I can't obviously track what people do day to day, but it's always consistently looking or solving that next problem or what could come up. That's, that's my thoughts. And I wake up in the morning, I'm like, what's the biggest problem that I need to solve today? And then I go, how can I map it out? And I map it out steps by steps to, to reverse engineer it from there as well. Who do I need um, to speak to to solve that problem, whether it's an accountant, lawyer, or a finance person? They're the only real three people that I speak to on a daily basis, whether it's an accountant, lawyer, or um, my finance person there as well. And I think one of the biggest questions was, how did I find this person? There are a couple of people. It's really connecting the dots, guys. It's really being very resourceful with, maybe events. There's a lot of brokering events that go on, a lot of finance events that go on. You could definitely meet people through there. There's a lot of business events where brokers are there. But for me, my brother's a mortgage lender. So he connected me straight to commercial lenders. Um, I actually found a broker that was quite um, open to the deal as well. He specialized in commercial lending on a Facebook group here in Australia. And really? so we can quite fast and not just personally, we're all on the same level, but, um, throughout the deal as we were closing it, I actually said to him, like Brendan, his name is Brendan. Um, I'm looking for, for a finance, for a finance director on my team. I said to him, but more so the only person that I'm looking for is I need somebody that I can rely on to find the money. I said to him, are you that person that can find the money? He says, yep, I'm that person. And immediately I knew, I knew I was like, okay, let's, let's tee up a couple of deals. And I want to start pushing deals through you specifically there as well. And so where were we? We'll go through the negotiations. The two yeah, perhaps well. also, also add a little bit about, so you said you talk, you have accountants, lawyers, perhaps talk about yep. how you find them because people think like, yeah, lawyers and accountants don't want to work on those deals or just, just share, share your experience, right? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing for me personally is um, any, any account that I've ever gone to. So one trick that I did do is this, finances and accounting is the, my biggest weakness. Now, I actually decided to get an accounting tutor 
okay, to actually teach me this hands-on. I'm a very hands-on learner as well. But this particular tutor, his background used to, he used to work for PwC. He used to work for KPMG. So his background speaks for itself. He's retired now, okay? And so based on what, I, what I've learned as well, finding retirees that just want to give back is probably the best dream team that you'd ever want there as well. And so I'm paying him $45 to teach me about accounting, but I'm bringing the company's financials to the table so he can teach me as well. So it's sort of two stones. So he's teaching me about it, but I'm also asking him, what are your thoughts on this business? You know, what do you think about the cash flow? What are the patterns? And then I'm also learning at the same time when he's actually pointing all these things out, I'm going, oh, wow, I can see it. I can see the cash flow. Yep, I can see it all moving there as well. So I'm learning as well as he's on my dream team. And we both win, win, triple win, really, because I'm paying him for his time as well. So it's, it's completely fine as well. And so he's probably to find a legal tutor that's been retired that's in the business as well so that he'll have a lot of connections to all the law firms as well as he'll my, my tutor will have a lot of connections to kpmg as well as all the other big big accounting firms there as well but he's just my tutor at the end of the day Love and so where did he find him this all night uh, like, like a local it's called gumtree i don't know if you guys have it there as well it's just gumtree it's just the yeah. it's just the website that we use for local People, it's like a notice board. It's like an online notice board where people just post services as well, and you would be surprised. So that would probably help a lot of people out. But I'm just, I'm always open to learning new things as well as building new relationships with people. But that was one strategy I used. The secondary one was literally just adding value to people as well. And obviously, it's it's what you teach as well, Warren. But before before asking, you know, to take from people, give something of value, and I've literally probably just. You know, I've just taken accountants out for out for lunch. That's pretty much all I've done. And just, I didn't even talk business the entire time until the very end. And they go, well, why did you even organize this meeting in the first place? And then they asked. And then because they asked, then I was like, okay, I'll tell you. You know, then I'll tell you. But after lunch is had, after I've talked about their goals, their aspiration, their family, their, their, their intentions, then they're willing to go, okay, here's, He's asked a lot of me, what can I give him? They, they initially feel that intention to give. And I'm like, that's, that might be maybe a big thing that people are missing. But when you give so much value to somebody, it's just a reciprocation. What was the pitch to take them to, to a lunch or something? The pitch, the pitch, the pitch, the pitch. Well, I, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a researcher. I'd, I'd, I'd probably play dot to dot, very, very, like I play dot to dot. And I'd normally get a referral from somebody first. And then I'd, I'd go, this person referred me to you. Am I able to take you out for lunch? So there's already a common link there. There's already a commonality there between a friend that they know and a stranger. So I'm just going, hey, John asked me to see if you could help me out. Can I take you out for lunch just to see if we're a good fit, for example? And I wouldn't even talk about the, the business deal. I would just talk about them the whole time. And it's just being interested in them and accountants. Not many people show a lot of interest in them as well. They're very, yeah, just general. That's, that's my experience. And when they, when somebody showed genuine interest and I was speaking to an accountant about this and they used to, they speak down on themselves like a lot. They go, no, I'm just an accountant. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not just an accountant. You can tell stories based on numbers of a company. That's very important. And when, as soon as I said that to them, they're like, wow, I didn't realize I did that and I added so much value to them and they're like, okay, Dean, well, how can I help you out today? And I'm just like, yep. You know, it's, it's just showing appreciation, showing that you're interested in somebody on something or what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then they go, wow, I actually feel recognized, feel appreciated. And that's, that's probably the biggest thing. It has nothing to do with business. It's all about building relationships. If you get good at building relationships, then anyone will, will help you. Anyone will help you. So true. So tell us a little bit about the back and forth negotiation then. Um, what yeah. about the second offer then? You sent the second offer and how, how did that go? Yeah, the second offer didn't work. Um, <laughs> it, was, um, it was probably more so because then we started going. Th so he, was, he understood after the second offer that it was definitely, that's when we go, so how are you going to finance the deal? And he, and he said to me, it looks like a vendor finance deal. I'm like, of course it does. I said to him, I was very open about it. And he says, yep, okay, perfect. Uh, now that we know that, 
now we're really talking about deferred payments and seeing what can be made over the, obviously on the closed payments. And then I was just open and honest with, I was very open because we had that relationship, the relationship that I built with this broker, it's coming back to building the right type of relationships where you can just be open, transparent, and honest, where you don't have to be very, um, not unconfident, but just be very, you know, this is what it is. This is what I want. This is what you want. Okay. Let's try and meet somewhere in the middle. And that's really the conversation that you want to have in the, in the negotiations for me personally there as well. And it was very like, it was just very transparent. I just asked them, Hey, what do the buyers want? And what will they be happy with as a, as a, as a deposit? I said, let's be reasonable about it. Obviously everybody would want a full payment on the, on the closing payment, but let's, let's try and meet halfway there as well. I was just trying to obviously, you know, just, just squeeze in and be flexible about it. And he says, look, they're probably looking at around three to 400 K. I uh, said, so is that 300K or 400K? He's like, there's a big difference. <laughs> there's a big difference. It's a 100K difference. Though, is what he said. It's probably 400K. And so in my head, it initially went to, okay, 350. I'm like, they'd be happy with 350. I'm like, it should just be enough to go, okay, and the next, the next payment should be enough to push it into the, into the, um, into the obviously, they're happy. Okay, yep, that should work. Um, we started playing with that, with that negotiation as well. Like, okay you know, some sort of 40 to 50% down up front and then the rest over. They weren't happy with four years whatsoever. And what the broker was sharing with me, he said, based off his deals and his vendor finance deals, now this probably is just his experience, not, not everyone's experience, but he said that a lot of Australians, when it comes to the Australian market, he said that Australia is very new when it comes to creative strategies. Um, they're not very open to deferred payments over 10 years or 10 five years or whatever it is whatever whatever he said to me i was like okay then what would make them happy and they said probably be looking at two to three years i said is that two or three years again being very clear because it's a big it's a big difference it's, i guess the the thing that i'm saying is that I, I guess what i'm emphasizing on is the clear relationship that i had with this broker is just very yes or no black or white and that's what you, that's the way you want to be negotiating because if you're not clear when it comes to the piece of paper and you're signing on it it's the biggest problem in the world to be honest um and so we ended up getting down to the third offer which was really shifting around the percentages over the deferred times there as well so it ended up splitting because he was the broker was the one that suggested it of maybe you can load up the first year and then and then just obviously dropped the percentage on the, on the second year as a deferred payment. So he was looking at 50% down, 30% uh, on the first year, and then 20% on the second year there as well. I chucked it into the numbers and the cash flow still worked out. And me personally, I think I can drive sales as well now that I've got a secondary deal as well in the way that they're going to really merge. I can really see it really taking off anyways. And so that, that was my thoughts around there. I'm trying to think whether there were any other negotiations that I might've missed out on to be able to help any other people there as well. Um, and, and, and if you want to talk perhaps a little bit about the uh, loan terms as well, I think that will really help. Yeah. You yep. So, guarantees or tell us a little bit more about that perhaps. Yep. Finance isn't my isn't my forte. I'd love to probably solidify it a bit more probably at a later stage. But um, the loan terms is over ten years. They said I don't mind. Me personally, I'm, I'm look, look, where I'm wanting to. Obviously, my I guess dream goal and where I'm wanting to go is I'm happy holding on to businesses for the next five to ten years. I'm really I'm, I'm actually genuinely happy doing that and growing businesses and merging them together and building a, a quite a solid business from that that standpoint. And so ten years wasn't a problem for me. I guess my main focus, I guess the, the main the main terms was based off my finance person as well. You're probably speaking to the wrong person about this, but um, he was um, he was saying, look, all the cash flow is all transparent. The businesses have shown steady growth over the last three years. And so when I go into the, obviously the boardroom and actually pitch it to these banks, which is what I'm happy he's doing for me, um, he said, as long as the business is, is showing steady growth and there's enough assets, so in the asset, in, in the particular business, he, he was going to go two ways. It was either going to be cash flow finance or it's going to be either asset finance. Either way, they both levied out because there was over $500,000 worth of assets there as well. And I'd still be able to squeeze at least a down payment down on the business. And then once it's in my name, my thoughts are I could probably get financing in a different shape of way if I needed it there as well but um 
that's all I really know about the finance when it comes to the finance terms as well. I'm not too well well levied there, um, knowledgeable, which I'm learning. Don't worry, I'm, I'm getting better and better every day. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anything else you think that can add value to, to the guys? I know I had a couple questions about this as well, about just got it up here. Um, trying to make sure I help because I know some people had some particular questions for me. Yeah, I'll check the post as well. Uh, I remember questions definitely about financing. Uh, Finance. Where I'm also looking at the oh. so I wanted to learn more about your experience. How are you funding the deal? Yep, so most of the funding's coming through cash flow and asset financing for myself in particular. Also, is it a straight purchase or part of a reverse exit? Um, it's probably more so, I guess it's just a deferred, a deferred, deferred payment. I guess it is a straight purchase if, if that's what you mean. I don't know what you mean there, uh, Sib. But the owner yes. is paying the business. Who's going to run the day to day? What's your plan with that? Great question, actually. That's probably the focus as well. Um, the way the business is structured at the moment is he could basically run the business from home. Company A is what I'm talking about. And so he could do all the plans, all the quoting, all the sales, everything from home. And so my main goal is I'm allowed for around $100,000 in working capital to be able to at least hire somebody else to come in and at least do the sales consulting on that behalf. And all I can really focus on is just growing the business per se there as well. So that's my main focus is just growing the business and training somebody else to actually do the sales, but as well as manage the guys there as well full time. Um, so I think that'll be the perfect scenario for that. Um, it's more so more, I was even going to ask you because I know I'm, I'm buying two businesses at once and they're both super happy for me to take on their particular businesses because they see that I'm a good fit for their business. Um, my, my biggest struggle at the moment, I've got a couple of questions around that, is how am I going to balance the time? Because I know, I, I, I know and I've been reading a lot of time management books. I've been trying to figure out how I would structure the time, what's most important, what are the key main roles that I need to be able to do within each business. I've been trying to map it all out to be able to be prepared for it. I guess the main things that I'm, I'm struggling with right now is because one business won't actually need much of me to start off with, but the other business that I'm buying will need a lot of me as well. But they're both so close their settlements are so close together any business that I take on will need a lot of me anyways because I've got to learn the whole business ins and outs I've got to adapt to their culture as well and whatnot and how am I meant to balance those two two out with close acquisition times settlement times my my suggestion to you would be first of all to make sure that there is an enough transition period with the owners to make sure that yep. they're going to train you for a, a while uh, so you make sure you learn everything, right? In that period, you're also get to, going to get to know the employees. So I would immediately yep. try to figure out if and who can take over some of those responsibilities. And if needed, he can get more money in terms of salaries or if you're open to that, even give them some equity. Uh, like for some yep. of those employees, even if you give them one, two, three percent equity, it's like a life changing uh, situation for them. So that's something to consider 100%. Um, and obviously, if there's enough cash flow in the business, think who can run the business for me. Because for you, ideally, you want to get to a point eventually where you're stepping back and out there doing more deals, right? Initially, obviously, you'll need to be involved. You need to learn about the business. But I would immediately try to find out who can take over those responsibility, who I can trust that will have the agenda to grow this business and have the capabilities by giving them equity or money. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And in terms of time management, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the book, like the one thing and stuff, right? There's always, every day, there's always one, two, three things max that you can literally do with all of your um, power and concentration and productivity. So I would just literally every day focus on, yeah, what's the most important thing I can do right now? Like you mentioned with, um, with you trying to do these deals, like every day waking up, okay, what's the most important thing I can do right now? What's the biggest challenge I, I, I can solve right now? And who are the people who can help me? When you work on those deals, it's like, okay, I need to talk to the accountant, I need to talk to the lawyer, I need to talk to the financial broker. When you own the business, it's like, okay, I need to talk to that manager, to that dude who's working in that department. It's the same process. 
just different yeah. view on things. Okay, that makes perfect sense. That makes a bit more perfect sense because I know it's going to be a mixture between managing my time as well as energy as well. Energy one is going to be the biggest thing yeah. for me personally. Is there? Do, do you teach a, a hiring process? I don't know whether I just go and hire because I know my partner, my girlfriend, she's in HR, so she does this. She does recruitment herself and she hires people as well for her own company. But what are your thoughts there? So I believe I talk about it in the people. Um, video especially about how to hire hire the fact that you hire at least the way that i look at things the way that i kind of like experience in my life it's just i always hire for character and less for experience yep. so it's all about the characters that you want in those businesses and less about their skills because skills at the end of the day everyone can learn a skill set if they have the good the right personality Right. So I would first of all focus on that. Make sure that you have a process to exactly find the right people in terms of character. Um, sometimes it means yeah, just to see them in action, give them some tasks, some trial tasks to figure out if and how they work, uh, and then skill set. Uh, but in the end of the day, it comes back to your vision. What is your vision for this business for your long term and your values, right? And the more you interact with those people, like the biggest suggestion that I would tell you is that before you hire. Um, just make sure you have many interactions with those people. And that's how you learn about a person, just by having more interactions, by figuring out why, why you want to be involved in this business. Like, what are his values? And it's just by you, again, asking them questions the same way that you ask questions when you meet people, right? It's all, everything in life is just people. Like, as you mentioned, it's all about relationships. And the more you understand the other side, uh, the better you'll be with hiring as well. It's the same thing. And skill set comes afterwards. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Um, what was the other one no, as well? I've got a I've got a meeting with my um with my lawyers and my accountants mm -hmm. as well. I've never I've I've sat in boardrooms before, but I've never been the center of attention. Um, I've never been the, the like I guess the person where it's I'm the decision maker in in that room as well. Um, I don't know whether this is like, you know, some people in the group probably have a lot of experience and some people, a lot of people don't as well. What, what, what key things would you recommend for somebody walking into this type of scenario to just be aware of, just, just be aware of and be conscious of? I would say, I think I mentioned that in some of my videos. Um, first of all, breathe, meditate on that and come from mindsets that it's not a big deal. See what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm, in, the, I'm in the field right now, I'm playing. This is, my, this is my field, this is my game. And I'm, I'm more than good to be in this game. Um, I'm not better or worse than anyone else. I'm just here to make good decisions for me and everyone else and make it win for everyone. Uh, so it all, come, all comes down to your mindset and just being okay with being in that scenario. Um, and obviously, if you've never been in such a situation, at first, it's going to be, it's going to feel, you're going to feel nervous a little bit, right? Uh, but it all comes down to bringing it back in and saying, hey, I'm not better or worse than anyone else. I'm playing in this game with the big guys. I mean, if, if not you, then who, man? Just like getting to a point of understanding that it's okay, man. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Then you'll find out what to say. I mean, you, you know what to say. It's just a matter of yeah, being comfortable with saying those things and not making any rushed decisions, right? So just being, and usually when you make like a rushed emotional decision, it's just because you're nervous. But when you calm yourself down and understand, hey, it's not a big deal, you're making more, um, just better decisions in general. Yeah, yeah. no. No, exactly right. I've noticed a lot, a lot of people have been asking me questions about finance lately as well. And in my head, I always think I'm, I'm a very simple person, a very simple step by step type of person. I go, you know, worry about this, then worry about that, then worry about this. And sometimes you might have to worry about the other steps. But when it comes to finance, you almost don't have to worry about it until just before you maybe place an offer. You know, you need to know how much you can raise, which is the important part for me personally. But until you place that offer, then it becomes, okay, now we're going to start thinking about all those steps there as well, which is what you're focusing on, really. That's when you say it before, you got to focus on finding deals, placing offers, and then closing deals. That's literally, there are only three things as well. Everything else flows in between, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, 
I don't know whether that's as some other people call it the inner critic though as well. Some people start to doubt themselves. Just, just follow through with it. It's just a system and it's just follow just through. Focus on the next step. When you want to climb um, Everest, you're not thinking about the top. You got to focus on your next step, just your next step every day. Obviously, it's great to have the vision behind you, but every day you just focus on the next step, right? That's it. Otherwise, you're going to be overwhelmed and nervous and, and nothing will work. So yeah, yeah actually, well, I was very overwhelmed and nervous as well. I actually forgot a step mile. It was so funny. Uh, I forgot to provide the um, the seller with the uh, proof of finance and the proof of funds. Is what I was asking me about. I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up emailing, but it's all good now. But it's still, <laughs> see what I mean? Like you can still make mistakes. It's all good. We are all human beings, and people will be okay with you making mistakes as long as you'll be okay with that you'll be vulnerable like yeah i'm sorry that happens it's all good people understand we're just people we're just human beings yeah it was very um very interesting because i just uh had a business owner call me up today actually small well, on my behalf there as well um he just came back from a small holiday from his business and it really started to set in uh, he was like dean i just came back from holidays um i still like the idea now i can see why why I want to leave my business now because I'd love to get back on holidays and do it. So it started to set in for a real deep, it was really deep. And he says, Dean, I can really, as soon as we sat down together and started speaking, and I was very happy that um, you walked in. He's, he said to me, he was like, I, I, I wish I was like you at your age. I wish I, I, I'm game enough to, to open up a business, but now I'm, you know, I'm in my 60s and 70s and look at me now. You know, I just want to be able to see my business and what I wanted to do with it through you. Is that okay with you, Dean? I was like, Hey, let's 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 organize a coffee for let's say this week. When are you free? Wednesday? He goes, yep. Let's go. Let's ca catch up for a coffee. He goes, oh, I want to share with you what I want to do, where I want to go, and well, the main thing is, well, when he shared with me, his his daughter is actually in the business, so she, he works as the she works as the administrator for the for the business, and she just bought her first home. The big motivator for her to keep her in the business as well, and I was like, you know what? I said, what was her name? So this is so bad. Chris, his name's Chris. So Chris, I want to make sure that your family's looked after as well. If if Rebecca, her name was Rebecca, wants to stay in the business, hey, I'm more than happy to accommodate for that as well to make sure she can get her home as well. And so it's really just really connecting because at first he said no to vendor financing. I'm very open about vendor finance. I said, yep, 100% vendor financing. I can give you any number that you want deferred over this, this X amount of years. I say, very open about that. And if that doesn't work, then I guess I'm going to have to put my shoes on and start walking the pavement and start, you know, finding investors. But that's just how it works. But if you can get vendor financing, for me, I'm like, that's 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 great. And small hints on this, guys, as well. I've been sharing with small people that have reached out for help. I googled vendor financing businesses for sale. You would be surprised how many businesses come up for sale that want to be vendor financed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as well and if it's your first deal hey like for me personally i would have been happy to jump on it as well but um after the negotiations he says look dean i'm very excited um i want to move to the next step which is the letter of intent which i've got all typed up i've got all the vendor finance terms agreements all set up as well which the the broker from my first deal helped me out he sent me all the templates so i was like okay well you've just given me all the templates for my second deal now yeah. and so it's just all moved on uh very well i'm looking for my next business but I don't know whether I should blend a third business in just yet. I don't know. Because normally I, I'm in deal mode. I'm like, yep, I've got to find the next one. Yep, I've got to find the next one. But keep moving the momentum. But maybe I should hold back for now. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's really up to you and how you feel about that. Like, I don't want to force, like, uh, push you too much. That's really, yeah, just, yeah, just sense it with yourself. If you can really handle all of those. Uh, but dude, go, go with your guts. I mean, so it's all it's all good either way you'll find you'll find a way there, there is no right or wrong here you see what i mean yeah. there is no there are yeah. companies out there who are buying thousands of companies every year literally growing by acquisition yeah. so three i mean it's your first ones but it's like it's it's real it's, it's yeah. on how much time do you have Moran? because i'd love to how much time um, do you have yeah so i'm, I'm good um if you want like, to, to ask me something in private, I'm, I'm good to, to stop the recording and then feel free to ask me other more questions or any other last words you want to... just be like general questions like, I guess, you know, if, you were 20, if you were 24, what would you have done differently? My age, if you were my age, what would you have done differently? Uh, 
it depends if I look at life the way I do right now or the way I did back then. Uh, the way I look at the way, things, yeah, the way you do now. The way I do right now, um, I would focus on just one industry and sure. one, one industry that is able to add the most amount of value to the most amount of people. Um, it's a very generic answer, but that's what I would do. Um, yeah, yeah. So just focus on adding value, literally adding value, and focus on just one thing, right? Because the the younger, like like right now, um, like when I was your age, and again, it's like like we have, like when I was younger, I was like all over the place. I was like, I just want to be involved in too many things at the same time. And right now, I see it as like, yeah, it's not a big deal because I just like enjoy that. Uh, but I know if you want to have the biggest amount of like wealth, like liquidity event, you just need to focus. Yeah. And just one become the expert in that one business, one sector, you will kill it, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, and exactly. Don't forget to breathe and enjoy life. That's, that's would be my second probably uh, suggestion. Remember it's a, it's a, it's a process, it's a journey and, and results in the end of the day, it's, um, it's not about the results, right? But you only understand that after you get the results. That's the problem. <laughs> no, I understand, but and I make sure I try and, in fact, it's probably my partner that pulls my head in. I actually asked her at the start, I go, you're probably needing to pull my head in when we need to go on holidays, when we need to just go out for dinner. Just do those little things together. Just the, the, yeah. It's all the little moments, even in my head, are like all those little moments that are added up that create a whole memory role as well. Yeah. Just even remember as well. Exactly. So, Definitely right there as well. Hey, what do you, I don't know whether this would be good for the, for the groups, but what do you do for fun then, having said that? Um, so I'm going to visit this weekend uh, my family and friends back in Israel. So, yeah. I'll, I'll, where about, where, which side of the world? Are you based in like Europe? I'm, I'm, all, I'm literally all over the place. Like I'm in Cyprus right now. I'm going to be in Panama next week. Um, and then we'll see wherever life takes me. So, but what I do for fun. It's funny. Like I really, like I like to go out, visit friends, like enjoy party with them and shit like that. But it's like every now and then, um, just be, be with people I love. But my day to day, I, I never like partying with friends. I'm not getting fulfilled by that. If you, you know what I mean? Just like temporary, it's temporary fun, but it's like, I don't even know. It's like a, a release anymore for me. Um, cause it's just, just getting me more, tired actually when i'm getting back um yeah. yeah like i'm i'm getting the most amount of fulfillment by by doing good things by creating good things by um uh, yeah just make not making a progress here but creating valuable things i'd say that's that would be a good a good way to put it yeah no, that definitely makes sense there as well i didn't want to drill too deep don't get me wrong, but <laughs> it's all good. No, nothing too high, man. No, that's good then. Well, hey, that's that's pretty much all on my behalf. I know maybe people want to probably find out more, but you know, you can you can always reach out to me personally. I'm happy to obviously jump on a phone call with anyone in the group as well to help out as much as I can. I've noticed the closer I came to the end of the deal, the more people I helped. Because <laughs> I understood how it worked. I'm like I'm like, okay, it's coming to an end. I'm like, I'm going to help as much people as I can to the point where I've been calling people in Africa in the middle of the night, like some of my friends that are in this space as well, I'm just trying to, do you need help with anything? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just trying and to how, make sure. How that good that feels? How good that feels to just help and give back? Yeah. Yeah. It's like someone told me, like, I don't care how many cars, amazing cars you drive. It's not going to be even close to the feeling of giving something, of giving someone your car to drive it and see him enjoy that. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. so yeah, dude, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all that. I'm sure if anyone have a question, we'll post it in the Facebook group. Just post your comments below or something, and I'm sure uh, both of us will be happy to answer. But, dude, thank you so much for sharing it all. And go and keep, keep killing it, dude. You're doing an awesome job. And I love seeing you're just out there executing. I think that's the biggest lesson. You're out there doing the work, right? Like learning all that is awesome, but you're out there. You're taking action. That's, I think, the biggest thing people should look out of, out of it. So, dude, no, thank exactly. you so much. And keep killing it and keep us updated. Perfect. Uh, thanks for the call, Warren. No take, take care, man. Have a good one. Amen. Bye-bye.